G'day folks, in this week's clip we'll be looking at the new veggie pods, I'll do a bit of a check up on the aquaponics talk mushrooms, and I also need to give you a bit of an update about the root pouches for you folks who buy them off me here in Australia. Thought I'd just come up under the uh, back of the house just to show you our original veggie pod. This is a medium one we bought ages ago, and it's got a couple of bits of mint and some red shallots, some perennial leek and lemongrass growing in it. It's done really well. I've had some bumper crops of uh, leafy greens, beans, um, capsicums or sweet peppers and also some uh, very nice garlic out of it. I do think they're a great idea, especially for the height if you can afford them and you can't make your own wicking beds. I think they're a fantastic idea. The one thing I did have issue with them was basically, as you can see here, uh, things tend to grow a little bit tall in them and it makes it very hard for you to use the um, irrigation system that comes with them that's actually hooked up to the um, cover that goes on them. Through the week I bought a couple of second hand ones and I'll just give you a bit of a gander at what I've done to them. So through the week Kira and I nipped down to Gordon's place and picked up a couple of second hand ones. We actually got four, one for a mate, one for my parents and two for us. So thank you very much folks, it was fantastic meeting you and chatting. Uh, Gordon's basically decided to change the way he's growing so he's not using the veggie pods anymore. So we got these guys and I have altered them slightly. As you can see they do come with a watering system. Uh, there's a 40, uh, 90 degree angle that's supposed to be there, but I accidentally snapped it off. That runs water up to these sprinkler heads at the top. And those sprinkler heads are normally um, just along the top ridge of the cover there. Now, as you saw with my lemongrass, things get a little bit too tall, so I can't really have a cover on them. So rather than trying just to hose them down uh, to water them and get some water into the reservoir, I decided to turn them into wicking beds. So each individual cell, as you can see down the bottom there, has an overflow and I can water directly uh, yeah, into those cells and then the water from there can rise up into the medium itself. Now, very sorry VeggiePod people, um, I, but I had to do this hack. Just like I said, um, the top is a little bit too short. Not only that, uh, I intend to grow some brassicas in here, so I'm thinking about three broccoli across the end so every cell basically will have three broccoli in it and if you are aware of how broccoli grow they grow rather large and bushy and this cover here would not be able to contain them every time I lift it and drop it I'd be damaging the leaves so what I'm intending to do is while they're seedlings raising them in this because we are at the start of um, autumn here so we still have really hot days and the shade cloth will help um, protect them from the sunlight it actually comes in at this angle here uh, through our winter. North is behind me here. So that'll give them some protection from the last of the autumn heat and also keep the um, cabbage butterflies out just as they're starting off. So yeah, the seedlings will be protected and then as they get larger I'll start spraying with things like dipole, which is a Bacillus thuringiensis, natural bacteria that kills the caterpillars. Uh, one thing I will have to do though is just trim back this black turmeric. She's got a little bit burko in this root pouch. But trim it back so there's no leaves touching because what that can do is invite ants to come and bring aphids on uh, to the plants because aphids or uh, ants can still um, crawl underneath this little gap here. So yeah, that's pretty much all what I've done with them. If you are interested in seeing how I've um, turned these into little wicking cells, uh, just let us know in the comments down below and I'll think about posting a clip because I have taken a little bit of footage on them. But yeah, that'll give us uh, four square meters of growing space. Um, just excuse my backyard, I didn't get to um, whip a snippet this week. Um, there was also plans to put some little wicking gardens in here using those barrels over there and maybe an IBC or two. They're still on the cards. The reason we don't want to develop the whole backyard, if you've missed out previously, we're getting some landscapers in to create a terrace down the back or down the side fence and the back fence. And if we have gardens and chicken pens and all that sort of stuff down there, yeah, they're just going to get in the way. So. We thought we'll try and tuck them in behind the little lime tree here. I'll give you a quick look at the lime tree. She's gone absolutely burko at the moment. Loads of fruit on there. We have had a number drop. Uh, I think it was just due to the amount of rain. Uh, that branch there is pretty amazing. I love how many fruit are on that. But we, yeah, we do have had some drop We're a little bit smaller. So we've just been collecting them and giving them away as we can. Over here on the other side, you can see we're getting some nice sized fruit. I think these may have just come from a um, earlier flush. So we're going to be harvesting quite a number soon. So pretty chuffed about that. We'll go up and give you a bit of a gander at the aquaponics, hey? 
So not a lot has happened with the aquaponics. We've still got our two little warrigal greens in there. They're actually growing rather well. They've picked up nicely over the last week or so. Uh, I've just been adding the fish emulsion just directly under the, um, the inlets here to the grow beds just to pop it where the bacteria are. And through the week I've done a number of little tests. And I thought I'd do another one today um, just to show you. There's my little markings of how much I've been putting in. Just to show you um, yeah, what we're up to. So I won't make you sit through the testing process. We'll just skip straight to the results. So, I have a bit of a gander. The ammonia is pretty much well uh, traced to 2 point, oh sorry, 0 0.25. The nitrite is still up there. Maybe if we turn the light on that might make it a bit easier. But the nitrite, yeah, it's around about 1 to 2, I would say. And the nitrate, it'll come out in a little stand here. We're sitting well above 40 parts per million now. So I really do need to get some seedlings in. I've just been a little bit flat strapped this week and um, the selection down at the um, nursery wasn't that fantastic. So I'll hunt around for some more and we'll try and get um, maybe some Italian parsley in there and some lettuce and that sort of thing. So I can start to use up some of those nitrates. But yeah, on the whole, pretty impressed with the way she's going. Um, I did have a chap uh, offer some fingerlings to us. Uh, Alan, so very sorry I haven't rung you yet, Alan. I'll give you a call today. You'll probably get it before you see this. And we'll discuss when I can pop out and have a look at your aquaponic system and talk some fish. But yeah, until this system cycled, there's no point really putting any fish in here. So there you go. Bit of an aquaponic update. And now on to the oyster mushrooms. So this is the mushroom spawn I created using stembuck culture on the 30th of November last year. So it's about four months old. Uh, just a load of kitty litter in there with bits of stem that I cut up using a um, sanitized blade and just a little bit of micropore tape over a hole in the top there for some gas exchange. And I dare say that is well and truly ready to break up and pop into this bucket. I'm going to try a little bucket growing system, make a load of holes around the sides here and then add in my medium with the um, spawn all mixed through. As for medium, I'm actually going to do a little bit of a mix, I think. I've got these hardwood smoking pellets, so I thought I'd give them a crack. Um, basically, you soak them in some uh, calcium hydroxide solution. Calcium hydroxide solution just raises the pH and um, kills off any nasties, and also add some, um, some moisture to them, and also uh, add in some more of the cat pellets. These are made from a recycled uh, newspaper or paper, cardboard. And yeah, there's no um, perfumes or anything like that in it. It's what I use to make this little jar here. So that's on the cards. I actually had a supporter uh, post this morning, Dave, g'day Dave, um, that he's just used um, King's Drophoria in his asparagus beds and he's starting to see results. So that'd be interesting to see how that goes. I'm not too sure how they'd go in our climate, but it's something I'd like to have a crack at as well. With the asparagus here, I mean, we only pick it for about, oh, probably two and a half to three months at the most. And then after that, we just let it go dormant. Oh, well, not dormant, still creates ferns, but it puts the energy back into the crown for next season's harvest. So it'd be good to get a, a dual crop out of that. So yeah, might have a bit of a crack. So if you're interested in seeing a clip on this as well, let us know in the comments below and I'll see if I can take a bit of video through the week. So this is where the mushroom spawn jars and little boxes we're going to make up to um, put bags in are going to live. Obviously we can't keep things like the bucket in here because the moisture will affect the timber, but little enclosed little um, grow boxes and that sort of thing. Uh, this used to be where I kept the root pouches. I've got a couple held back for my own personal use. Um, but yeah, uh, this is pretty much well where they're going to live. Just quickly talking about the root pouches, um, I've got someone who is interested in, in buying the remainder of my stock. It's all packed up upstairs. So yeah, it looks like I'm getting out of the root pouch game. What happened was that the folks that were importing the root pouches into Australia, they've decided not to stock them anymore. So to get them from a root pouch, it means I need to buy a, a whole bale of um, every single size that I want at a time, which is something I just can't financially afford. And also too, I mean, this was my storage area and there's no way I could sit, you know, um, probably 15 different sizes, 15 pallets in there. So it's just one of those um, things I decided to um, uh, sell the remaining stock to a store down in Sydney that um, already has a few of the different colored ones that she's selling. Um, so when, when that all goes through and after the sale's finally made, I'll actually put a link on her, uh, to her website on my website. 
So anyone looking for root pouches through my links will then go through to Wendy's site. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. If you're um, into root pouches and you want to pick some up here in Australia, are uh, you folks in the States, you can still order them through my Amazon influencer store. Please be aware that I do receive some commission from that. Um, and there's a link on the root pouch page if you're interested in that. And I really would like to thank all you marvelous folks who have been buying them through our store here. Uh, thank you very much. Um, it has been fun. I've met loads of interesting people and I've made a couple of friends actually along the way selling the root pouches. So yeah, thank you very much folks. Hope we can still keep in touch. But yeah, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm still gonna be using them, so I'm probably buying them from Wendy after these guys run out. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section if you wanna see how I did that little bit of a veggie pod hack, and also to the oyster mushroom bucket. If you wanna see how I'm gonna set that up, just leave a comment down below, and if enough people wanna have a gander, I'll uh, knock up a couple of clips on both of them and post them. I would like to thank you all for coming along and thumbing up the clips and leaving your comments down below. Really do appreciate it. And also need to thank those marvelous folks who are supporting us through the YouTube membership program and the Farm Your Own Yard website. Thank you very much, folks. Really do appreciate the support. And you can always check out our super contributors down in the description below. It'd be great if you could check out what they're all about over on their websites and their Facebook pages. But I will pretty much will leave it there. I think my mum and dad are about to turn up for their Sunday morning coffee. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming. And I'll catch you next week. Cheers, folks. Have a top one.